Welcome back. Let's get my next guest out, shall we? It is the force of acting nature that is, Mr. Ian McShane. Here he is. Come on out, Ian. <laughs> Ian, great to see you. Hi, oh, brother. How are you? Well, you look great. Come sit down here. Just over here. Sit down here. You, you, you look incredible. Hi. Let <laughs> Can I share with the audience, do you mind your age, Ian? Because you do look absolutely remarkable for it. Ian is 70 years old. Incredible. No way would anyone think you were 70. No way. No way. And I still don't have an arse, as I believe you once remarked. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're slender from the waist down. Slender from the waist down. Well, you're slender from the waist up as well. Thank you, darling. Uh, what's your life like out in America? Because you've been in Los Angeles for quite a while now. Yeah, but I've lived there on and off for 35 years, John. I just came back a lot, Jonathan, to do, like, when I did Love Jar, I was still living there. My wife's American. Oh, so you were there during that period as well? I well, no, I mean, kept a place there, yeah, yeah. but I, was, you know, I didn't commute as quite as often as I do now. No, but the last ten, when I went back to do Deadwood, which was ten years ago, we moved, we moved from in Hollywood to the beach. So I live in Venice Beach. Wow, and that's a very So what keeps me out is long walks on the beach. So yeah. you do that? You go out with the wife for a long walk? No, long walks, or without the wife? <laughs> With the whales, go and look at the whales, go and see They're, the fishermen on the beach. Are what, you can see whales from the beach in Los Angeles? You can see them coming out, there's pods going down, the San, going down now towards, killer whales going down towards San Diego. I didn't know that. Go, oh yeah, lovely. You must get recognised a lot in the States now, especially after Deadwood. Sometimes for Lovejoy, believe it or not, which is the funniest thing. Even in America? A lot of people like today, yeah. Wow. Because it was a quite big hit on PBS. Yeah. Oh my goodness, look yeah. at that, yeah. <laughs> wow. There he is, yeah. never had a first name. And you know what's interesting now is a lot of the time they bring back the old shows, they bring back the old characters. I'm sure they must have asked you, would you do another... Yeah, they did, but what are you going to do, bring it back? I mean, there was talk before, they said, would you be interested if they come back? And I said, why? It's like, it's tired. If you brought it back, you know, why don't you make it a girl? He had a daughter in the show. Make it, you know, love joy, and the first time she appears, it's a girl. That you would could, be enough. You could no, play a girl? No, I would you? not wear a oh, wig, see, Jonathan. Okay. Sorry. No, I could play a dad. He'd come in and say, this is the daughter, that whatever. But, it, I mean, that's... Yeah, like, you need to wear a wig. You're, I can see how proud of you are of your lustrous locks. I heard even when you were in a recent show, you refused to shave a monk's patch in oh, the Oh, Christ, I'm going to shave, yeah, oh, and Pillars of the Earth. They yeah. said, yeah, one of the, they said, and the contract is, you'll be in a lovely hotel in Hungary, and you'll be there for six months, you'll get expenses, you'll get four airfares, and you'll have a problem. I said, pardon, what was that? Said, you have to shave a little hole in the head that looked like a monk. I said, no way. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the Japanese place here and had it straightened and down and then went there and of course they just stuck a thing on it and you, you didn't on, but, see it. But, but all these English actors were going, why haven't, why haven't you got a hole in your head? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a monk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, <if you laughs> but I don't think anyone thought they were monks, they were actors playing no, monks. No, I said mug, not monks. A mug, <laughs> I see. <laughs> you work with some of the great... Richard Burton. I mean, to be in a movie with Richard Burton, and they don't make him like that anymore, do they? No, they don't. He was great. Well, the funny thing is, I was talking... Re uh, what was it, Robert? I had lunch with Ray, Wing Commander Winston, <laughs> yeah. last year. And uh, Winston said to me, do you know something, McShane? He says, I was watching... The Gulf War start... He said, they were showing villain. And then they broke in halfway through the show and said, uh, we regret to inform you the, the uh, Gulf War has started. And they cut away. I said... When the war stopped, did they continue showing it again? <laughs> the war is over, we will now go back to villain, starring Richard Burton. No, it's funny, isn't it? Well, I've got a clip of you in that. Because you have? It's, uh, I have, because uh, I remember seeing this movie when I was a kid, and it kind of scared me. It's a good movie. The men in it are, you know, they're frightening men, and it, was, it struck me as being, certainly when I was younger, as a very realistic portrayal of, of criminals of the sort that we didn't see so much. They're not glamorised in any way, and they're kind of presented as... Well, Richard played a kind of composite of the, of the Cray twins at the time. I thought it was a very undervalued movie. It did very well, and, but it was a, a sort of a bit... Bur Burton wasn't at that period of his life, of course, because it was overshadowed by his relationship with her. Yeah. So they were all saying, how? Oh, he's not a saint, he's not an actor. You go, well, try working with him. Yeah. The guy was great. And yeah. a great guy, too. Well, he's great. Even this scene, and this scene, and it kind of looks a bit dated, obviously, the clothes and yeah. the setting, but uh, when he comes to stage, you just... He's, even before he says anything, he's scary. Look at this. Wolf? Wolf? Hello, darling. Oh, I see. Bad moment. Well, you shouldn't have let me have a key, should you, love? Makes a girl feel special, a key. Get out of here. 
slag. You better go, Venetia, now. You get out. Quite risque for 1970. Well, yeah, because you are gay lovers there, and that was quite a bold quite. thing to do. On yeah, screen. yeah. I mean, it was quite ner nervous making. I mean, I before we started the scene, Richard and I. I mean, first of all, we used to, you know, he's a great guy. Except everybody, everybody used to go in Richard's trailer around about sort of one o'clock, and we'd have, you know, actually, don't want I'd be in there at eight thirty, and we'd be sharing a few libations in the morning. But oh yeah, well, I was the day, but people, you know, drank. It was it's a whole different world now. But you'd start drinking at 8.30 in the morning. Well, I, I remember going in there and having kippers, and the guy said to me, I was having kippers, and the guy said to me, Richard, I'd love you to come and run the lines for the scene, Mr. Uh, Ian. I said, sure. He said, oh, you can bring your, bring your breakfast. So I took him in there. And Richard, and Richard, I came in, Richard went, oh, kippers, I love kippers. Mm. <laughs> Look, he said, give me some kippers, Bob. You know? So he went away, and he came back, and we're running the scene. I'm eating the kippers, and Richard goes, oh, yes, kippers. Mm. And they just sit there, going, oh, yes, kippers. <laughs> Oh, I love kippers. Get me a vodka and grapefruit juice, would you? <laughs> and the kippers went push one side. Uh, I said, well, I might as well join you. So the kippers got him in the mood kippers for the vodka Kippers got him in the mood juice. for, well, the smell of kippers can make you want a vodka and grapefruit juice. <laughs> uh, but you have, what a career you had. I mean, there can't be many opportunities you miss. Can't be many things you look back on and regret. Oh, are there? Are there, well, there? Well, I think, you know, there's two things in life. I think it's good luck and bad luck. And most of it, and professional wise, whatever, I'm very lucky to be still, you know, doing gigs and getting in there and uh, like Jack, which was a lot of fun to make with Nick and uh, Brian Singh. It's a pretty good movie, actually. Let's yeah. have a look at you in it because you play the good guy for once because often you do get, you either, these days it seems, the bad guy or the kind of, you know, borderline yeah. good bad guy. But here he's kind of out, that must be quite a nice change, I guess, is it? The golden armour. I had the golden armour and a golden helmet. <laughs> <laughs> but the golden armor was it was very funny because you I couldn't hear a word anybody else was saying half the time. It also squeaked a bit when I walked, so I had to I had to dub the it looks great and the hell, and the horse is also decked out in gold. <laughs> but afterwards I had to dub the whole movie because every time you you get so you have to, have to be in the studio and dub for four hours the entire movie. You look good in gold though, oh, if you don't mind me oh, saying. Okay. <laughs> okay. People might not know this, but uh, Ian is also a talented singer. So much so that he had an album out here during what we now refer to as Lovejoy Mania, uh, which went gold here in the UK. Oh, I've got it, uh, absolutely. This is 20 years ago. Now, I'm going to show a clip of you singing, OK? But the reason I'm going to show you this clip, and I think you're going to enjoy this very you're much. Gonna, and Mr Womack is going to come after well, this. Don't we, well, you know why this is going to be fine? Because you only hear a little All bit right. of singing. What I want to do is I want to use this to illustrate uh, so that maybe Damon, who you know, needs a bit of stagecraft, and also <laughs> Bobby, if they ever wonder what to do during an instrumental break, look and learn. Here's Ian on Pebble Mill. Here we go. Check this out, oh Ian. This is funny. God. And your destination <laughs> You don't know There's another seven minutes of that. <laughs> oh. Eat your heart out, Brian Ferry. OK. <laughs> Pretty good, though. Uh, how lovely to have you on the show. Ian, I, uh, I'm thrilled when you say yes. Always am. I hope you come back again soon. It's great to see you, son. It really is. The fabulous Mr Ian McShane. Thank you, Thank you. 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 It's great. Great to have you. <laughs> Don't go away. After the break, I'll be chatting to the legendary Bobby Womack and he will be performing live for you right over there. So, Bobby Womack, come back up after these. <laughs> <laughs> 